I just farted you. Yeah. I can smell it. <laughs> Welcome to today's episode of The Playbook, a sports talk show with Mark and Tyler. I'm Mark. And I'm Tyler. Today we're going to be talking a lot about the NFL and a little bit of MMA. Um, also, we'd like to thank our two brand new subscribers for watching. Uh, thank you for subscribing and thank you for watching our videos. So let's look back at the week in sports briefly. The Cowboys keep winning. The Packers still look like a 500 football team. John Jones suspended for a year. Yeah, I don't. From the MMA. And, oh yeah, we, we had a <laughs> presidential election or something. But enough about politics. So let's get... Oh, uh, you're not are you kidding? <laughs> so let's talk about NFL ratings for a minute. Uh, they're down this season. The NFL is trying to figure out ways to uh, mm -hmm. increase their viewership. So why do you think the NFL ratings are down this year? Honestly, I don't know. I don't know. Good answer. I, I don't know. Like, the, you watch the football games and they are boring. I'm a huge football fan, but they are boring games. I think there's there's too many commercials. There's no doubt about it. You know, there's two seconds left in the half or the quarter, change of possession, and they go to a commercial break, even though there's going to be one in two seconds. It drives me nuts. <laughs> uh, I think another problem is, and I know you don't like to talk about it, I think the announcers suck. Uh, I, I think some of the announcers are, are, are not current enough for the for the viewership. Yeah. They, you know, I don't need to have someone repeat what just happened after every play. <laughs> or talk about how they scouted them in last year's combine. <laughs> right. <laughs> don't care what their 40 speed was eight years ago. Sticking with the NFL, we've had a, uh, a pretty good debate on which division is the best in football. Um, of course, I would choose the AFC West, and of course, he would choose the NFC East because he's a very, Correct. very biased Dallas Cowboys fan. Um, why, why do you think the NFC East is the best division for football? Well, overall, their one-loss record is what twenty and eleven. Uh, no team, every team in the division is over five hundred. Mm -hmm. So, best team in, in football right now. I see what you mean, but the AFC West is also twenty-three and twelve. So it's not that big of a difference in record, but I mean, you got the, the best team, you got the seven and two Raiders, and you got the eight and one Dallas Cowboys. I mean, granted, the last place in the AFC West is four and five in the San Diego Chargers, but when you look at the San Diego Chargers and you look at the games they played, they could easily be seven and two or six and three. But they're not. But they're not, but they're not, that's the point. But when you look at the bottom of the NFC, AFC, uh, the NFC East, sorry, we got the Cowboys. At five and four, the Cowboys. Are five I mean, and four? the Giants. <laughs> Apologies. At five and four, and when you look at the Giants, their strength of schedule is not the greatest. Their playing is not the greatest. Don't get me wrong; their defense is playing okay. Okay, average. Their offense is struggling. They have Odell Beckham and Vita Cruz making plays sometimes. <clears throat> well. Yeah, I, be, I mean, when obviously you, it's not, I'm, I'm not, a, I'm not gonna, you know, yay rah rah the Giants. Right. But when you got a player uh, in Odell Beckham who is one play away every game from breaking it wide open, they're in every game. Mm -hmm. So uh, and the, and they have a, a a history of doing very well second half of the season into the playoffs. So, but in terms of overall record, I think the NFC East looks pretty strong. No one would have seen this coming. Uh, the AFC West, everyone saw the Raiders on the rise, weren't sure if they could actually do it. I mean, for years now, oh, <laughs> yeah. it's the Raiders' year, it's yeah. Raiders' year. It looks, it looks real good. Denver they're still looking, haven't figured out their offense. They're still looking great, though. Their defense is struggling with some injuries, um, but we'll see. It's, it's, again, halfway through the season, second quarter of the season, and... Uh, I think those are definitely the two top divisions in, in And when you and when you when you want to compare the two best divisions you always look at the, the bottom teams. Who who out of the bottom teams is a better team? The Giants have a better record, but the Chargers play better. But who's who's a Charger fan? So now it's time for our mess up of the week. So did you see the uh, failed onside kick by Pittsburgh's Chris Boswell? Yeah, e yeah, I did. Uh, <laughs> It wasn't, it wasn't the best. Uh, we'll show you now. Can't put seven or eight on one side. Now there's the shift. 
I, I honestly don't even know what to say about that. That is, that is, uh, in my books, an unsuccessful onside kick. So we promised you some MMA, and here it is: UFC 205, Saturday night. It's arguably the, the best, the best fight card of UFC history. We got Conor McGregor now at Eddie Alvarez. Uh, main eventing USC 205, and we got Tyron Woodley versus Wonder Boy Stephen Thompson. Uh, the the fight before that. So I mean, you look at these two main events; they're some great fights. Um, you like you don't you're not a big fan of Conor McGregor. Not a big are you? fan of Conor McGregor. Not a big fan. Not a big fan. He's moving up in weight class, and I I really I'd like to see him get knocked out. Uh, I'm gonna take the side that not a lot of people are going on. You you go on you go on. Um, these sports, these sports shows, and they, they talk about how oh, Conor McGregor is gonna destroy this guy, right? You look at Eddie Alvarez, the dude is a beast. The dude is not going down easily. In my opinion, Eddie Alvarez will knock out Conor McGregor in the third round of this fight, and Conor McGregor will retire from the UFC after UFC 205. You heard it here first. So since our viewership is up, and we're getting a lot of fan mail, <laughs> yeah. I figured it'd be time to read some letters from the mailbag. So here's our first one. Dear Tyler, why do you wear a hat during the shows? How am I supposed to come up with my next hairstyle if you keep that quaff covered up? Thanks, Odell. <laughs> what is that? What is that? What is that? And another letter. Dear Playbook. Thanks it's us. For the it's us. We're Playbook. Yeah, that is us. <laughs> Thanks for the shout out for my ability to win two championships and end two curses. I need your help though, to create a GoFundMe page so I can pay my closer a hundred million dollars. <laughs> Please help Theo from Chicago. <laughs> Thank you for watching this episode of The Playbook, a sports talk show with Mark and Tyler. Um, before we leave you today, we have uh, a bunch of must see games must -see. in the NFL this, this coming Sunday. What do you got? I have Dallas against Pittsburgh. Okay. I I have some opinions on that game. I think Dallas are going to blow Pittsburgh Steelers out of the water. That's not even a biased choice because I'm not even a Cowboys fan. But the Steelers are overrated, and they're going to get destroyed by the Dallas Cowboys. What else you got? Uh, New England, Seattle. I hate to say it. The Patriots are looking good. Seahawks are looking average. But this game is going to be so boring. I am predicting the final score to be somewhere around seven to six. No, okay? not gonna happen. It's gonna be seven to six. Not gonna and if happen. you're playing fantasy football and you have Gronkowski, he's gonna have about six points. And Christine Michael probably about the same, like he did last week. Five carries, one yard, and a touchdown. Uh, Help me win a game though, so not too bad. <laughs> I, I I don't agree with that. I think uh, Seattle, New England will be a, a, a really good game. If Cam Chancellor plays. I think Seattle has a chance. Russell Wilson looked healthy last week. He, he was faster than he's been all year. He looks like the knee's getting a little better. But I, I agree with you, New England, it's a tough, it's a tough play at home. But the only shot Seattle has, they gotta shore up their defense. Cam Chancellor plays, yep. Michael Bennett plays, Seattle's got a shot to win. Yeah. If neither of those guys play, it's it's New England. Yeah. I, I could, yeah, I could see that too. Um, Can we circle back to the Dallas Pittsburgh game, though? <laughs> uh, yeah, because we have some, we have some viewers out there who are big Pittsburgh Steelers fans. We have, we have about one or two, one, one or two, two viewers yeah. who are huge Pittsburgh Steelers fans. But sorry to tell you, <laughs> they are not going to win this game. Another big shot, another big challenge for for Dak and and, and the boys. Uh, if they win this game on the road, I pretty much cements. Tony Romo's position on the bench for the rest of the year. What oh, that, that was cemented in week four. <laughs> okay, we don't even don't even start on <laughs> that. That was cemented in week four. But, so so how is how does Dak play this week with Tony actually in uniform on the sideline? It'll be the first time all year he's actually going to be in uniform I think on the sideline. He's probably going to play way better. He's probably going to throw four hundred something yards, three touchdowns, probably rush for one more. I don't know. It's Dak Prescott. He's unpredictable, but uh. Once again, thank you for watching this episode of The Playbook with Mark and Tyler. He's been Mark, I've been Tyler. <laughs> Peace.